This is the NFL on NBC with host Greg Gumbel and co-host Ahmad Rashad. This is a season that began with great promise for both San Diego and Indianapolis, but both have stumbled of late. That makes today's matchup a very big one. The Chargers are happy to get linebacker Junior Seau back. He missed last week's embarrassing loss in Seattle with an injured knee. Jim Harbaugh engineered last season's playoff upset in San Diego. He knows the Chargers will be seeking revenge today. Our big doubleheader game, a key AFC East matchup as the slumping Dolphins meet the surging Patriots. New England has won five of six. And suddenly, Drew Bledsoe is playing like one of the top quarterbacks in the game. 373 yards passing last week and no interceptions in the big win over Buffalo. Another of our big late games features a pair of fast starting but recently fading teams. The Kansas City Chiefs visit the Minnesota Vikings. Hi everyone, Greg Gumbel along with Joe Gibbs, Mike Ditka, Chris Collinsworth, Ahmad Rashad will join us shortly. We've reached the halfway point of this season now. What does that mean to you guys? It means home field advantage for some of those cold weather teams. Man, hey, this is knock them down, rock them, sock them. This is the Bears in the old days, Redskins, Buffalo, Green Bay. All those teams start picking up home field advantage here. Yeah, I remember the Redskins coming up there in the wintertime. We didn't scare them. They kicked our butt. It was cold and we didn't care. But I'll tell you what I like about it. Some teams that started real good are falling back, and some teams that didn't start so good, like the Patriots, are starting to come on. Their confidence level's gone up. And I like Par Bill Parcells' coach team in the second half of the season. Joe, you sound like you're getting back again. You got that opening yeah. in New Orleans, now, you know. You get rock them, sock them. Now, 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 now that I think about it, I'd rather go back to a warm weather team. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it's a double hitter day here on NBC. The early game most of you will see is San Diego at Indianapolis. The Chargers are 4-4. Four four. The Colts are 5-3. Both teams have just been decimated by injuries this season. Things uh, very much resembling mash units in both Indy and San Diego. And it's not only the sheer volume of the injuries, many of them for both teams have been to star players. So, neither team is close to being healthy heading into this important game. Let's turn to our two game analysts, Bob Trumpy and Sam Weish. And among the key players from both teams, guys, give us a sense. Who's going to play? Uh, well, Greg, for the San Diego Chargers, these guys are out. Uh, Courtney Hall, the center, is definitely out. Stan Humphreys, definitely out. Dwayne Harper, the corner, definitely out. Y you mentioned that Junior Seau is going to play. He's got a strained right knee. He's got a bruised left knee. Came in early this morning, ran around the field here in Indianapolis a little bit. Frankly, I don't know how well he can play. Both these teams need a bye month, Greg. Sam, I can't wait to watch you and Trumpy go at it today, but you are a coach. Tell me, how do you deal with all these injuries? Well, you know, in the game planning part of it, you go to the strengths of your ball club and you try to de-emphasize the importance in the game plan of the weaknesses, the injured players, the injured spots in your ball club. The tougher spots, though, where you've got injuries at multiple, uh, multiple injuries at the same spot, or if you've got a lot of injuries at one key part of your game, and that's the offensive line. San Diego, much more disadvantaged because their offensive line is injured. It affects the running game, the pass protection. And then the last thing you do really is you bring in some of those guys and you privately challenge them. Put the hat on them in front of the team and then bring them into that office and tell them you're depending on them. Bob, this is Joe. Last week against the Redskins, the Colts, really, they just got pounded on the ground. 215 rushing yards by Terry Allen and his teammates. Can Andy do anything about that? Uh, Joe, it's interesting. We talked to Jeff Harrod, the middle linebacker. He said, I hate to do two things. I hate to lose and I hate to keep, get my butt beat. And last week, both happened. It is their number one priority this week, Joe, stopping the run. Primarily because San Diego, as you well know, runs an offense that's very, very similar to what the Redskins ran last week. Sam, you know, Harbaugh's been getting killed. He's been running for his life. Is there anything he can do or they can do to protect him a little bit better? Well, I'll tell you, Mike, we talked to uh, Jim Harbaugh yesterday expecting to see a guy that looked pretty bad, and we actually thought he looked pretty good. And then he said, well, wait till you, wait till you see me with my uh, shirt off here. I look like a leper. I'm all black and blue everywhere. He has been getting beat up. The only thing he can do is be a very efficient, very unselfish quarterback. He's got to drop straight back in that pocket, give him a landmark, and then step up into the pocket so those tackles can push those defensive ends behind him. And the other thing I think he's got to do is he's got to be careful, and this is hard to do, protect himself. He cannot get knocked out of this game. They need him too much. All right, Sam, Trump, thank you both. Have yourselves a good day out there. Uh, San Diego against Indianapolis. Injury-riddled teams. Coaches can only hope to get their good guys back. San Diego's having a problem. 
Well, they are having a problem, and I, I think, Greg, the, the big key here, too, is rushing the football. When you stop and think about this, a Bobby Ross team, we saw them last year run over people. They're averaging 80 yards rushing this year, and Indy only 96. I think the team that comes out and starts knocking people back and running the football has got the best chance to win this game. I agree with it, but I tell you, Indy's got a big advantage in this game, and that's Jim Harbaugh. He is their starting quarterback. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, and, and he's going to play in this football game. Stan Humphreys is not playing. Salisbury's not the answer. Yeah, speaking of the Colts, in addition to Harbaugh and the broken and knows that he suffered. It's just that this was a solid team at the beginning of the year that's just been killed. You know, and I think part of the reason why Harbaugh is healthier was the play of their offensive line last week. Kip Vickers came back. Tony Mandrich with a tremendous game, so the tackle's much more solid now. And what that has allowed them to do is to get Ken Dilger, their fine tight end, and Marshall Falk out in the route and not have to use those guys in pass protection. All right, Chris, one of our big late games on this doubleheader day is Miami at New England. Crucial game in the AFC East, which is tightly bunched with three teams tied at five and three. The Dolphins just a game back at four and four. Well, I'd like to think that it's a wide open race. Uh, you look at some of the teams, of course, the three at the top, you know, they're five and three. We're one game behind, but we've only had one division loss. And so uh, if we could be successful in the game against New England, we got two of our big opponents, Buffalo and Indianapolis at home. So I think it's wide open. You could start putting some teams behind you if you could put a little winning streak together. Now here, we're in the third month now, and uh, we played better the second month than we did the first month. Okay, now if we could play better the third month than we did the second month, then we're going to be in business. Bill Parcells talking about being in business. Jimmy Johnson can't say the same thing. He's got some real problems. Real problems in the secondary. Right now, Miami is on pace to give up more completions, more passing yards, and more touchdown passes than any other team in their franchise history. So right now, they have to be really concerned with what's happening in their secondary. And at the very top, Mike, you were talking about teams that started slowly. That was New England, and they've built up speed. Well, they have, and I really think they've built up speed because they understand they're going with what they got to go with. They're going with Bledsoe. They're going with the receivers. They're going with Martin running the football. This is a better football team now than it was two months ago. I'll tell you the reason why this is going to be a good game. Hey, Miami, this is, this is another must-win deal right here, I'll tell you. they got to get something going. I would suggest, hey, running the football would sure help them. All right, guys. Let's go over to Ahmad. Ahmad. All right, thanks, Greg. Our other early game today is Cincinnati at Baltimore. Both teams coming off wins last week. The two and six Bengals beat Jacksonville in Bruce Cousins' debut as Cincinnati head coach. The three and five Ravens won in overtime. Beasley Reese has a report from Baltimore. Thanks a lot, Ahmad. I was a sports anchor in Tampa, Florida in 1987 when the Buccaneers made Vinny Testaverde the number one pick in the draft. Well, 10 years later, he's living up to the expectations. He's the best quarterback in the NFL over the last month, and if he keeps it up, he's headed to the Pro Bowl. Now, I think I just heard a few million people say, are you talking about Vinny? Well, let me make my case. He's number two in quarterback rating in the NFL behind Brett Favre. Number two in total touchdowns with 18. You see the passing yards. Now, there's more to the story. Vinny's calling his own plays. Last week, the coaches called a quarterback draw. Vinny changed the play, hit Michael Jackson for a touchdown in overtime to beat the Rams. But now he's in a competition against his own defense. As many points as Vinny puts on the board, the Ravens' defense gives right back. So that has been a problem. That's the reason that they're three and five. They give up the most points in the NFL. So they take on the Bengals today, a team with a newfound sense of confidence. One and oh under Bruce Coslett. It should be a good one. Ahmad, back to you. All right. Thanks, Beasley. I wonder where Beasley was 11 years ago. <laughs> anyway, they stay with us as the NFL on NBC continues in just a moment. Still ahead. It's brother versus brother in Minnesota as the Chiefs' Dale Carter goes against the Vikings' Jake Reed. The Patriots' Willie McGinnis made some big plays last week. He talks to Chris Collinsworth. Chargers linebacker Junior Seau and head coach Bobby Ross talk about San Diego's recent problems. And Greg Gumbel talks to Dolphins quarterback Dan Marino about Miami's recent slide and today's showdown with New England. Peril in the Pacific, a rescue on the high seas, Dateline Sunday. He's back. Jim Carrey in the movie that started it all. Oh, righty then. So call the kids. Hide your pets. <laughs> and watch Ace Ventura Pet Detective tonight at 9 on NBC4. Then on News Channel 4 and 11. Do not go in there. He went from a trailer home to Hollywood heaven. Yes! Yes! But how did the man behind the mask catch a rising star to fame and fortune? <laughs> You'll find out Jim Carrey's secret to success after the movie tonight on News Channel 4 at 11. Hi, 
Hi, I'd like to start getting home delivery of the New York Times. Get a head start on your day by having the New York Times delivered to your home every morning. And if you call now, you'll get 50% off the regular home delivery price. I enjoy waking up and having the New York Times waiting for me. I know it'll tell me things I won't hear, read, or see anywhere else. I read Business Day first thing. Gives me the story behind the scenes and who the players are. For just three sixty dollars a week, you'll get insights into politics, business, and international news. And each Sunday, you'll get the book review, travel, arts and leisure, week in review, and the celebrated New York Times Magazine. Hi, I'd like to order home delivery of the New York Times. Times doesn't just report on the issues. It helps me to understand them. And that's important when I'm making decisions that'll affect my family. So call now, 1-800-720-8300, and get the New York Times delivered to your home every morning. I can't imagine starting my day without it. Election Night. Watch it with us on News Channel 4. Foxborough is the site of today's big 4 o'clock Eastern Time game between the Dolphins and the Patriots. And that's where Will McDonough joins us for his weekly news and notes. Will? Ahmad, thanks very much. Let's start our report today in Buffalo, where the Redskins are in there to play the Bills. I talked to General Manager Charlie Cassidy of the Redskins this week, and he told me that their team is banged up for this game, and he's very worried. Three of their best defensive linemen, Wood, Boutte, and Palmer, will not play today. Mark Logan, their fullback, is expected to be out. Henry Eller, their fine wide receiver, probably will not play as well. Let's move on to the Detroit Lions visiting Green Bay today. Scott Mitchell, their starting quarterback, will not start. Don Mikowski gets the call. Mitchell was injured in practice this week, throwing a long pass on Thursday. He hurt his ribs. Let's talk about another Mitchell in Dallas. Johnny Mitchell, the tight end, worked out with the Cowboys last week. Will not play today, but they are expected to sign him next week, meaning they don't think their veteran tight end, Jay Novacek, out with an injured back, will return the rest of the year. Last Sunday night, there was a weird finish to the Patriots game. Willie McGinnis, their fine defensive end, picked off this pass, returned it for a touchdown against the Buffalo Bills to really win the game however there's a penalty on the play 15 yards was assessed against the Patriots bench allegedly for knocking down an official on the play where McGinnis ran for the touchdown the Patriots had a kickoff from their own 15 yard line and this enabled Buffalo to throw a Hail Mary pass in the end zone for score at the end of the day the next morning Patriots coach Bill Parcells looked at the film and found out it wasn't a player or a coach who knocked down the official it was a ball boy the league has apologized Terrell Davis has been one of the great players in the league this year, and look at how he fits among the running backs who have had two great years coming into the National Football League. These are his projections up there with the likes of Eric Dickerson and Billy Sims, some of the greats in the past, for combined yardage for his first two years in the league. And finally, let's look at some wide receivers. Go back to the class of 1988. Generally considered the best ever in the National Football League. Sterling Sharp was in there. Michael Irvin was there. This group of six were all first rounders. And look at the total, 209 catches as a group for the season. But look at what this year's group is doing. Terry Glenn, Keyshawn Johnson, five in the first round. They project to 270 catches for a season, which would make them the best of all time. Back to you, Greg. All right, Will, thanks very much. You know, here in the studio, we have two very distinct factions. We have the coaches faction over there, <laughs> and with you and with Ahmad, we have the wide receiver faction, although Mike is a coach and tight end. And let's face it, the wide receivers are the most important position on the football field. They're the home run hitters. They're the Babe Ruths. They're the Hank Aarons. And you can ask Joe, though, tight ends are important as well. Though they are. Joe had three of them. None of them ever caught a pass. They did a fine <laughs> job blocking, just like Mike did. Let, let, let me tell you something. Him, we Mike. used to get charge him, the wide receivers. They had to buy a ticket to get in the game. Yeah. And then we let them play if they were real nice, because they never did anything. I will say this, though. Uh, one, uh, three of them kept me in a job. Clark, Monk, and Sanders for a long time, 12 years. And and the class that we just we just uh, showed up there, that 96 class, they're going to keep a lot of coaches in, 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 in their jobs. I'll tell you, those guys are class, and they're making big plays down the field. You're right, Chris. All right, guys. No matter what Mike says. Settle, what happened? settle down. Let's get back to the game in Foxborough. A lot has changed since the Dolphins beat the Patriots 24-10 to in the season opener. New England is 5-1 and since opening at 0-2, and they've been scoring 30 points a game. Miami is 1-4 and since starting 3-0. and Paul McGuire and Phil Sims are standing on the very spot where the official was tripped on Willie McGinnis' interception return. Phil, do be careful out there. 
I will be Greg, and we're staying on the exact spot. What happened? Willie McGinnis intercepts a pass running down this sideline. The ball boy on the sideline is excited. He wants to look at the touchdown. He comes out. Boom. He bumps the official, knocks him down. He gets up, throws a flag. Nice hit. Thank you, you know, that thing, that thing was important because it could have cost New England the ball game. What happened was it was a 15-yard penalty. The Buffalo Bills threw the Hail Mary, got back within three points in the ball game. Well, they're fortunate it did not affect the outcome of the game. And uh, talking about New England, Bill Parcells, a coach I've known for 15 years, he was superstitious then. He's even more superstitious now. One of those things, loves to get to the stadium early. How about seven hours before game time? Also, the teams has won the last two games. They did not practice two weeks ago on a Saturday because of bad weather. They continued that trend yesterday. No practice. Two weeks ago, they beat the Indianapolis Colts. Bill Belichick's father, Steve, was at the game. Guess what? He was here last week. They flew him again in again this week. Bill Parcells taking no chances. He wants to win this football game. I kind of think Jimmy Johnson get a little superstitious, too, because this week at the beginning of the week, he gave them off Monday and Tuesday in Miami, which he's never done before. But they went right back hitting on Wednesday and Thursday. It helped the offense. Offensively, Dan Marino will start in this ball game. He is not 100%, nor I don't think he'll be 100% this whole year. Defensively, Chris, you are absolutely right. The Miami Dolphins on defense are terrible. The last two games, 65 passes were thrown, 51 of them were completed, and seven of them for touchdowns. They've got to do something in that secondary. Well, they might have some help today. The wind is gusting up here. It should affect the passing games and the kicking games. Greg? All right, guys, thank you very much. Following our football doubleheader today, the NBC primetime schedule is Dateline Sunday. That includes a segment with Michael Jordan, and that will be followed by Third Rock from the Sun, a guest appearance tonight by one of our favorite ex-coaches. We are so proud. <laughs> he gets I all the great parts. Did in you life, get paid to do that? In life, I learned there's nothing like a great hand slap. <laughs> You've got to have a good hand slap. Oh, you know, one thing, you <laughs> always could pick your coordinator. You know no, that? i tell you what, she's awfully nice. i tell you, that's a great cast. I have a lot of fun doing with those people. They're, not only are they talented, which we all know, but they're fun people to be around. Keep your hands to yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> keep, keep them over there. <laughs> we look forward to Mike's appearance this evening. Third Rock from the Sun. Up next... Dale Carter of the Chiefs goes against his brother, Jake Reed of the Vikings. And we'll talk about charges by the Denver Broncos that Kansas City is playing dirty. Tonight's NBC Superstar Sunday. Yeah! Yeah! Mike Ditka's on an all-new Third Rock when aliens discover football. You make it all the way down to the big poles, you get to dance. Cool! Go, Badgers, go! Then look who's back in Boston. You think everybody knows your name? Aw, oh, come on, that's Shelly Long on an all-new Boston Common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. NBC Superstar Sunday tonight. Hey! Nobody beats the Wiz. This Monday and Tuesday, it's the Election Day Open Box Sale. All Open Box merchandise has been drastically reduced to near cost, at cost, or below cost. TVs, VCRs, audio components, and camcorders, thousands of cameras, portables, and computers, all brand new and all 15, 20, 25, even up to 50% off. Near cost, at cost, or below cost. This Monday and Tuesday only. We're clearing out inventory to make room for Christmas. Nobody beats the Wiz. This is a special presentation, The Jets on Four, with Len Berman. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to our weekly Jets on Four segment. We will return to the NFL on NBC in just a few minutes. Well, Keyshawn Johnson was right. He guaranteed the Jets would not go 0-16, and last week, for the first time in 96, they finally won a football game, beating Arizona. And the Jets have this week off to celebrate before they host New England a week from today. Now joining us, as he does every week, is Keyshawn Johnson. He's been spending the bye week at home in Los Angeles. So Keyshawn, how's your uh, fall vacation been going? It's going pretty good. You know, I think that i uh, got to take this time out and get my body healed and get ready to start going back and get prepared to play New England. So tell me, how does it feel? You and Joe Namath make guarantees. You guaranteed you wouldn't go winless, and uh, you were right. Yeah, but I'm not trying to get caught up in a Joe Namey thing. It was just one of those things where I know my team wasn't going to go 1-16. What was the talk among the players? Was it just this huge sense of relief? Yeah, I think it was. I, you could tell the joy in the locker room after the game, especially at halftime. We were up 17 nothing. At times, things seemed to slip away. You know, we had a 17-0 lead, and all of a sudden, you know, it closed real quick. But we, 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 you know, we came apart at the end of the game, and we decided that we wanted to win, and everything fell in our hands. All right, let's back up. You had a nice uh, touchdown on a razzle-dazzle play. Is this one that you were working on in practice or just made up in the huddle? 
No, I think that it, it's something we've been preparing to use all year long, and we just had the opportunity against the Cardinals with the right defense to use it. When the lead started to slip away against the Cardinals, was the feeling, oh, no, here we go again, just like last week? Uh, not really. I think at times we felt that we could win the football game as long as we kept our head up and didn't let that lead get too big of a, you know, a gap in between, and we were going to be fine. And, you know, I don't know if my coaches got too conservative or anything like that. I thought they did a fine job in terms of calling the plays and getting the ball down the field to the right people. Keyshawn, so does this bye week come at a bad time or a good time for this team? I think it comes at a good time. I think it comes at a real good time. You get some healthy players back next week. You know, you get your starting quarterback back. You get Jeff Graham healthy again. You get the linebacker back. So with a healthy team, we should be able to do some damage. You said afterwards uh, you were going to put your uh, foot in your mouth once again, that you already guaranteed you'd win a game. Now you're going to guarantee that you're going to win a couple more games? We'll win some football games. Yes, we will. I think the team is capable of doing it. If you look what happened earlier in the year, we had an opportunity to beat some of those teams in Buffalo and Indianapolis, and we'll see them again later on this year. You know, uh, looking ahead, you've got a very tough New England team coming up at home. Uh, perhaps you'll have the home fans back behind you. Uh, this, this could work out pretty well, or what do you think? I think it can. I think it can work out well for us. You know, we have an opportunity with this bye week to prepare for them. I'm pretty sure my coaches is back in New York doing everything they possibly can to get this thing going. I'm sure you saw some of the Yankee victory parade? Yeah, a little bit of it. All right. Can you ever envision such a thing for your Jets team? Believe me, I've asked every question there is, every, trying to get every answer of what happens if we win. Well, what happens if you win? You know, when the Giants won, because they play their home games in New Jersey, they didn't have a New York City parade. Yeah, I don't know, but Jersey and New York is two different things. And that'll do it for this week's edition of Jets on Four. We'll see you next week when we preview the Jets and Patriots. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the NFL. You like your car? But it may not look so great. Time for the, uh-oh, better get Mako, guys. Right now, Mako value is better than ever. Get our great-looking Mako Ambassador finish for one low price. Our best value, right now, only $189. Mako, America's smart choice. He's back in the movie that started it all. Watch Ace Ventura Pet Detective tonight at 9 on NBC4. Then, after the movie, how did the man behind the mask catch a rising star to fame and fortune? <laughs> Find out Jim Carrey's secret to success. Tonight on News Channel 4 at 11. I'm Jane Hansen. And I'm Mary Savillo. Monday on Today in New York, a look at Fashion Week and upcoming trends. Plus, last-ditch campaign efforts Monday beginning at 5.30 on Today in New York. Later today in Minnesota, the Vikings host the Chiefs. Both teams started 4-0, but each has lost three of four since. A couple of desperate teams. Randy Cross joins us for a report. Mott, here in Minneapolis, one of your old haunts, the story isn't really the fact that Warren Moan won't be starting and Brad Johnson will be a quarterback. It's the running game, or the lack thereof. They won't have star tailback Robert Smith out for the year with torn ligaments. They're going to have to go with Scotty Graham, and this is a sick rushing performance from last week. We asked Denny Green exactly how this offense is going to fare with a new running back in the lineup. Uh, Scotty's a different runner, an inside runner. He gives you only uh, headgears, elbows, shoulder pads, and knees to hit as a shorter player who has a good idea of how to, to split the guys and go forward. So the players have a lot of confidence in him. He's one of the hardest working guys on our football team, and he's also a consummate NFL team player. So I think we'll respond very well with Scotty in there. Now on the other side, for the Kansas City Chiefs, when you talk running game, you have to talk about Marcus Allen. And once again, as it seems every week, Marcus Allen is assaulting the NFL record books. Not only is he looking to pass O.J. Simpson on the all-time rushing scorecard, also career catches as a running back, career touchdowns rushing. I mean, it goes on and on. But the bottom line is this team did not run the ball worth a darn last week, 14 yards rushing. So, hey, during this report, I walked farther than both these teams rushed all last week against those two teams. Back to you, New York, Ahmad. Thanks, Randy, and you're not even sweating. Anyway, one of the sidebars today in, in the Minnesota uh, matchup is that uh, Minnesota wide receiver Jake Reed and Kansas City cornerback Dale Carter. What makes it interesting is that Reed and Carter are both brothers. Now, not brothers like this, but real brothers. Reed is the older of the two by two years. Their mother's maiden name was Reed. Her married name is Carter. It'll be a little bit of a family feud today. Chris Collinsworth has more. One of the first games that I actually saw you play in person, I can remember coming away from the game saying, 
this guy's really a player. I mean, I was really impressed with what you did, and I mentioned it to somebody else, and I won't say who, but they made the comment, well, don't get too excited about him. He's going to land in jail someday anyway. Yeah. Do you think that that was the direction that you were going? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I look at it like this, and I have a lot of time to think about it. If I wouldn't have landed up in jail for a long time, I'd probably been dead somewhere, you know, either or. You know, it would have been one of those two. Because at the rate I was going, it was just, you know, ridiculous. Dale Carter has had numerous run-ins with the law throughout his career in Kansas City, including an assault, a DUI conviction, and an involvement in a shootout. When I was getting into all those things, it was like, you know, I get into them, then a couple of weeks go by, I get into more things, and, and then I really couldn't hide it from my mom, and that's really thing really changed me. You know, she will sit down and talk to me, and, and you know, I feel real bad. I feel bad, and, you know, with her talking to me, then, then the stuff I got into, because it really hurt her, and it hurt the family. I don't think I did just prayed. I just prayed day and prayed night because I just really didn't want him to get it, be in a whole lot of trouble that it would mess up his career. What finally straightened Dale out was a call from Big Brother. My father left home when I, when we were, when I was the age of 15. We haven't seen him since. And, and I was like the father figure of the house. And so when Dale got in, in trouble in Kansas City, you know, I had to call him and say, you wasn't raised like this. Brother, brother. This offseason, you tried to sign with the Minnesota Vikings. You went there, you signed a deal, and you made the statement that basically you didn't want Kansas City to match that offer. You really wanted to play with Minnesota. Were you disappointed that it came out otherwise? Well, really, I was disappointed in the aspect that I wanted to play, you know, with Jake. But, you know, I look back at it and... Uh, the reason I was really saying all those things is because all the off-season problems, all, all the problems I had in the off-season in the past years, I just wanted to get it away, get away from it, and just wash it out. And being up there with my brother, I know that I, you know, have a good role model, and, and, and things can straighten out up there. But, you know, I look at it, you know, hey, you can't run from your problems no, more, no matter where you are. And what's it going to be like today when brother hits brother? My first reaction, I'm going to get up and say, oh, that's all you got, you know? You used to hit hard enough when you were younger. I want to do the best I can, and I'm not going to, you know, lay, be easy because he's my brother. I'm gonna, if I got a shot on him, I'm going to take it. Dale Carter and Jake Reed. Well, Dale Carter has been in the news for a different reason this week, and with more on that, let's go back to Greg. All right, Ahmad, thanks. Uh, last Sunday, Dale Carter and the Chiefs were whipped by the Denver Broncos 34-7. to But while playing as a wide receiver, Carter blocked Broncos cornerback Lionel Washington in the knees. It was one of several questionable blocks thrown during the game. Washington suffered a knee injury on that play. He'll be out two to four weeks. Mike Shanahan and the Broncos are not happy. There's a fine line where you can go and attack players and, you, you know, you get into their legs or you get into their midsection. But at the end of the play, when it looks like you're going to stay up, and then all of a sudden you go for the knees, you can, you know, ruin somebody's career. I'm not going to let people take pot shots at our football players because they're not trying to intimidate. They're not trying to hurt or maim people. They're trying to play the game. What he did was not illegal, nor was it unethical. That's the part of it that really fries me. Oh, Chris talked with Mike Shanahan of the Broncos this week. What's his point of view? Well, first of all, that wasn't the play that he was upset about. It was a subsequent play. The only thing he was bothered uh, by in that particular play was the fact that Dale Carter stood over and taunted Lionel Washington. But this was a play that really bothered him, in which Dale Carter was going out on a pass. That was a pass play. He never looked back for the football and then went after the knees as his defensive back simply was sitting there and trying to play the pass. He thought that was unethical, and the debate continues between these two. Coaches, what's going on here? I, I tell you what, Marty Schottenheimer's upset because intent, I think, has a lot to do with this. Are you intending to hurt somebody? I don't think he was their receiver. And think about this. Those receivers go across the middle and or get drill from behind, and I, that happens to them all day. This is one chance they get to go be aggressive and block somebody. And, and the other thing, in this league, we're very inconsistent. We let the 49ers, for years, let their offensive line pull and clip people right from behind, and we get upset about this. For a long time, you say, the 49ers. For a long time, for a long time. 
Mike? Well, we're missing the whole point. First of all, this guy is not a receiver. I mean, you would love to have a receiver go out and block. Like, this guy's a tough guy. He's a defensive back. He goes out and he plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. What I saw is not illegal. I understand Mike Shanahan getting mad at it, but Marty Schottenheimer, I don't think, would coach anything unethical. He's a good coach. Both of these guys are good coaches. In the heat of the game, sometimes you get upset, but I tell you what, I love to have a receiver to block like Del Carter. If I had a guy like that, I would have won a lot more games. I wouldn't be set with you guys right now. You, you, <laughs> you know, Mike, the problem, though, in this situation is the Darius Johnson play, the second play that we saw, Dale Carter goes down and the pass is being thrown, so the defensive back is just looking in the backfield. He thinks that he's playing the pass, and so he's really defenseless. At least on a running play, you know you have to defend yourself. A little bit of a cheap shot, in yeah, my opinion. He's, not, de he's, not, he's not defenseless when he's looking at the guy. That's what I'm saying. You know, getting cut from behind or something, that's defenseless. I think in this case, he's looking at it right in front of him. But he's playing the pass. I, I, playing the pass, run, it's a short pass. I mean, you could get... That, that's the receiver's job to get downfield. I'm with Mike. Hey, I'd love, our guys would block like that. It's like the hey, Boy Scout motto, be prepared. You're on a football field, be prepared. Somebody's going to hit you. That's what it's about. Oh, now we're all safe. Mike Ditka is taking the Boy Scout route. We'll be back in just a moment. Still ahead, the Chargers Junior Seau and Bobby Ross talk about tough times in San Diego. And Dan Marino talks to Greg Gumbel about getting the Miami Dolphins back on track. But up next, one of the rising stars of the New England Patriots, Willie McGinnis. Peril in the Pacific, a rescue on the high seas, Dateline Sunday. He's back. Jim Carrey in the movie that started it all. Oh, righty. So call the kids. Hide your pets. <laughs> and watch Ace Ventura Pet Detective tonight at 9 on NBC4. Then on News Channel 4 at 11. Do not go in there. He went from a trailer home to Hollywood heaven. Yes, yes. But how did the man behind the mask catch a rising star to fame and fortune? <laughs> You'll find out Jim Carrey's secret to success after the movie tonight on News Channel 4 at 11. We know this is probably the last thing you want to think about right now. So don't. Think about this. Jeep Grand Cherokee for zero down and only $349 a month. Or Jeep Cherokee with special values. Both have Jeep's legendary four-wheel drive system to get you through the deepest snow. So head over to your local Jeep and Eagle dealer today to take advantage of these deals. Then you won't ever have to think about this again. See your tri-state Jeep and Eagle dealer. Election night, a night of high-stakes politics, a night when power can change hands, a night you can make history, and you can see it all on News Channel 4. Chuck Scarborough, Sue Simmons, Gabe Pressman, plus live team coverage and immediate local returns with News Channel 4 Live Wire. That's election night on News Channel 4. Make election night a night to remember. Watch it with us Tuesday right here on News Channel 4. Chuck Scarborough, Sue Simmons, Dean Shepard, Al Roker, Janice Huff, Len Berman, and now, Michelle Marsh, John Johnson. The best broadcasters in New York are all on the same team. News Channel 4, all day, all night, all week, always. You're watching News Channel 4, the Tri-State News Channel. Final game of the season last year, Mike Shanahan's Broncos with a chance to keep the Raiders out of the playoffs. Some uh, satisfaction, the former head coach with the Raiders has spoiled a season for Al Davis's Raiders. Well, tomorrow night, the 7-1 Broncos return to Oakland. The Raiders have won three straight to get to 4-4. Four and four. It's always an emotional game for Mike Shanahan going against the club that fired him. And Shanahan has some very distinct and specific memories of his days with the Raiders. And, Greg, he is still very bitter over the firing. Matter of fact, earlier this week, Mike was telling me that Al Davis is the head football coach of the Raiders. Mike said he had more control as a coordinator with San Francisco and Denver than he had as the head coach of the Raiders. He also said that Al Davis, when he fired him, told him that he would pay the entire amount of the contract unless he went to the Denver Broncos. He's back. You know, this is just 
out of the blue, but should Al Davis be on the field at the end of the game? You think they'd shake hands at all? This is just out of the blue, but <laughs> Mike said no way. No way. All right, Chris, from the AFC West, we go back to today's big game in the AFC East, Miami and New England. Back in 1994, the Patriots took linebacker Willie McGinnis out of USC with the fourth overall pick. New England fans were hoping that Bill Parcells had found another Lawrence Taylor. Well, after a slow start, McGinnis is starting to become an impact player. I've never felt so good about paying out so much money, so something isn't right. Last year, the expectations for this team were so high, you end up yeah. winning six ball games. Come out the first two games of this year, go 0 and 2. Right. You had to be thinking, oh, this can't be happening again. I know we're better than this. This town is itching for wins. I mean, New England Patriots haven't been good in a long time. And um, I think guys kind of took heed to that and kept, you know, stay with the things we've been working on. We came out and we turned this, you know, we turned it around. New England's recent surge reflects the play of Chris Slade and McGinnis. Known as the Bruise Brothers on the field, they act like brothers off the field. Chris grew up on the East Coast and I grew up on the West Coast, but when we got together, it was like we shared a lot of the same things and we got close really fast. Well, he's a little wilder than I am. I'm more of a laid back type, you know, uh, quiet, soft spoken. He's real loud and obnoxious and he, that's just his life, I guess that West Coast style of living or whatever out in LA. Every time, I get a sack. I can see it in his eyes how bad he wants. Well, it's just a lot of, it's real competitive between us. They're fortunate to play five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years together. Uh, it's going to be enough to motivate the hell out of these two guys. I mean, because in game situations, they're not going to want to let each other down. My first year, Chris had nine sacks, and I only had four, so I had to hear about that. I had to hear about that all year. Then the next year, I had 11, and he had four, so he's kind of hearing about that. So now he's like, I'm going to catch you. That's all I keep hearing, I'm going to catch you. I'm like, no, you're not, no, you're not. You know, we always talk about who's going to get the most sacks, who gets the most pressures, who gets knocked down the most. I mean, any little thing we can compete about, we will. You know, I had this one kid, Lawrence Taylor. Now, every linebacker in the league thinks they're worth $900,000. I had the, the daily duty of getting this Gatorade. It had to be green, so if the trainers bought out red or, or orange Gatorade, you would have to get a special jug for Bill to have green Gatorade every day. Willie had it a little easier than I did. I mean, Bill was on me all the time. I mean, all the time. Try and think with me now. Will you do that for me? Me and Chris kind of reacted the same way. We kind of produced the way Bill encouraged us. You know, I've never seen a town like this. <laughs> Guy makes three plays, and now we got him going to Ken. He could either make you fold or turn you into a better player. Four-man rush. <laughs> Kelly intercepted by McGinnis. Willie McGinnis, the foot race is on. He scores! Were you shocked when the ball was coming to you, and did you feel it all like... Don't drop it. I was out of myself. I didn't I didn't think about nothing but just trying to get in that end zone. If I was a little close, I think I might have tripped him up, make sure he didn't get in there. <laughs> it was like slow motion. Everything had stopped. I couldn't hear nothing. I was just running. And then when I got in that end zone, man, the best feeling I ever had. Willie McGinnis, linebacker last year, down lineman this year in the Patriots' 4-3 defense. But if there is a head coach in the league who plays more head games than Bill Parcells, I haven't seen him. I can't believe this guy's still getting away with this. I got to tell you, he used that line going back to Canton. or He used to tell Lawrence Taylor, he had him so ready to play us every week, he'd say, can you believe what the Redskins are saying about you? <laughs> and, and he fell for it every week. And these guys are still falling for it. Mike, I don't understand this. Well, the one-game wonder, he calls everybody a one-game wonder. Curtis Martin is not a one-game wonder. He's a good football player. But I think the thing's impressive about right now he's playing better defense I asked him about his defense and he said you know what they remind me of a bunch of dogs chasing moving cars but every once in a while they chase the right car and they're starting to catch it now <laughs> sounds like you could have used a little disinformation somewhere in there Joe we're back in just a moment up next the San Diego Chargers are struggling at four and four we'll hear from their outstanding linebacker Junior Seau and their head coach Bobby Ross CD-ROMs like Launch can connect to your internet link. So you can email bands you've just seen playing. 
the Intel Pentium processor. It jams. Jesse, Jesse, you're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. You've been thinking about getting a digital satellite dish. And thinking. And thinking some more. Well, think about this. The people at Radio Shack can answer your questions. Plus, now they've got great deals. Own an RCA brand DSS dish with programming for about a dollar a day plus installation. Up to 200 channels of select movies and sports available on USSB and DirecTV. Think about it. Better yet, stop thinking about it. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. This toothbrush is my life. Why, I have to pick archaeology. My father begged me to be a lawyer. Hey, it's never too late. Yeah, right. What about you, man? You ever think about retiring? Peter, my friend, I am retired. For people with their own idea of retirement, and I was a lawyer. Now there's Aetna Retirement Services. We not only give you the tools to build assets, but manage them as well. Build for retirement, manage for life. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Head & Shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. By Intel, the world's leading maker of microprocessors. And by Aetna U.S. Healthcare, raising the quality of healthcare in America. Junior Seau won't be at full speed today with a couple of bad knees, but he will play when the Chargers look to snap a three-game losing streak against the Colts. The Chargers season started with great promise, a 4-1 record, and then in week six, San Diego had a 17-0 second quarter lead over the Broncos in Denver, but since then, things have fallen apart. Denver rallied to win 28-17, and the Chargers haven't won since. Jim Gray spoke with Junior Seau and head coach Bobby Ross. Thirty-some years, and that was the most embarrassing performance I've ever had. And I apologize to the people in San Diego and everything else because that was an embarrassing performance. Embarrassing. Bobby, you made a statement after the game against Seattle, and then you backed off it on Monday. You're probably going to be thinking I'm crazy, but when I looked at the film, I really felt a little encouraged by it. Now that you've had some time to assess where you are, was it the most embarrassing, or how do you feel right now? Well, uh, I don't guess it was the most embarrassing. It would have to be up there in the top three, though. I mean, I take losing very hard. Maybe uh, I take it maybe some of the time too personally, even. Uh, you would think that with age, you'd get more mellow, but that's not been my case. I've gone the opposite, to tell you the truth. Yeah, there you see Junior Seau doing a little coaching from the sideline. I can't believe they're doing that. Get up there. Make a hit. Jim is frustrating, you know, I think every competitor will say the same thing, you know, to watch uh, your team go out there and battle and, and knowing that, uh, you know, we don't have all, all, all the tools in there, it, it hurts. Are you sure yet which Charger team really exists? Is it the one that won four out of the first five or is it the one that's lost three in a row? Well, Jim, you know, you, you can look at the, uh, the record now of being four and four. That's how good we are. You know, at this point in time, there, there's there's no research in you going back and saying, you know, which team are you, the four and one or the four and four? Obviously, it's the four and four because that's what it shows. Why does this team always start so slow? I, I think I'll go back to some key injuries every year, and I think that if you look through the course of the National Football League, when teams lose their quarterbacks, things start to happen. There has not been a year, not a single year, in which Stan Humphreys has not been hurt. And when that happens, uh, you, you know, you have to start over again to some extent. I think that's true for a lot of teams, and some of them have done very well with it. Uh, we just seem to be a team that has struggled with that type of thing. Survivors! Let's do it! Is there something missing here more so than what we all know, more than the injuries? It's just a lack of performance. It, it, it's nothing more than that. Uh, because your star players, or if your star players are hurt, and you have key players that are hurt within the team, people need to step up. You go to every game to try to win, and if you don't win, you better be accountable. Bobby, can you gauge the mental psyche 
of your team right now? Is it pretty fragile? Well, I think it is only because of the loser. I think what we got to do is just get to a breakthrough point. And sometimes that's a very difficult thing to do, and sometimes you have to, uh, you know, to hit at your worst point before you can start to work your way back up. And uh, I think that maybe we've started that. Hopefully we have. Well, it seems to me that Bobby Ross is very emotional, but it's a long season, Joe. That could be dangerous. Coaches have different personalities. Bobby Ross does get very emotional. Ditka, he gets very emotional. <laughs> and yet we've seen Tom Landry stand over there, and he's not emotional. At least you don't think he is. Hey, I've seen the same thing happen to him at, at Maryland in college. Sometimes he gets carried away, and it comes boiling out. Now, in the NFL, injuries are a fact of life. You just have to be ready for it. Yeah, but Ahmad, that used to kind of tick me off. You know what I mean? We get players hurt. Some of our key players in Washington, everybody say you're supposed to go on and just you don't miss a, 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 a lick. I tell you what, that's not true. And particularly at the quarterback position, in today's free agency, it's made hard to get two good quarterbacks. In this case, Dan Humphreys gets hurt. They're in trouble. I think Junior Seau summed it up best when he talked about the team. What kind of team are they? They're a 4-4 four four team. Yeah, probably uh, right. All right, we'll be right back as the NFL on NBC continues. Up next, the Miami Dolphins have stumbled after a 3-0 start. Greg Gumbel talks to Dan Marino about the big game in New England right after these messages. Your family. You'd give your life for them. But that's not what they want. They just want you to stay healthy. Yet if you have high cholesterol, you could be at risk of a first heart attack, even if you have no signs of any heart problems. And the fact is, about one third don't survive their first heart attack. Call 1-800-PREVENT to find out about treatment plans that could help you cut your chances of a first heart attack and live a longer, healthier life. Call your doctor or 1-800-PREVENT. I have no desire to be the resident tech head here. My goal as an IT director is simple. When information anywhere in our company, anywhere in the world, is as easy to access as the evening news, and the technology is as invisible as the heating system, then I'll feel successful. Help me get there. I'll remember you when they put my name on the door. Introducing distributed access from Compaq. There will always be questions. We'll answer the ones about cars. Huh? Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? You're out. Get Cell Some Power. Doctors recommend Cell Some Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Cell Some Power. Weekends, it's a great time to kick back and relax. Palmer, come on, get back to work. Or to do some chores around the house. It's also a great time to take care of your personal finances. If you want to refinance your home or get a home equity loan, you can call the money store this weekend and get an answer by Tuesday. Just give them the phone number so you can get back to work. Call the money store at 1-800-LOAN-YES. That's 1-800-LOAN-YES. Chargers wide receiver Tony Martin having the best year of his seven-year career. He leads the NFL with nine touchdown receptions. Most of you will see San Diego at Indianapolis as the early game of our doubleheader. In the late game, most of you will see either Miami at New England or Kansas City at Minnesota. Greg? All right, thanks, Ahmad. Last week, the Miami Dolphins were thumped at home by the Dallas Cowboys 29 to 10. It was the fourth loss in the last five games for the Dolphins and put a little distance between that 3-0 start and reality. Dan Marino returned last week after missing four games with a fractured ankle. I talked with him about the state of the Dolphins. Dan Marino looks a little bit uncomfortable. Very noticeable limp. Felt pretty good last week, and um, in the game, felt like I was moving around fine. And, and uh, although it's, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's 100 percent, but it's pretty close. Some players, competitors that they are, uh, are many times less than honest with their coaches, with the doctors, with the trainers, with themselves. Have you ever fallen into that? You know, playing before you're ready. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that a lot of times. <laughs> but I think that's just the nature of football. He's a great quarterback. I mean, regardless of what happened to his ankle, he, he doesn't need a lot of mobility because he, he gets that ball wherever he wants it anyway. And any time Dan Marino's in the game, it's a threat. Regardless of if he can't walk, if he's backed in the wheelchair, he's still going to make something happen. 
you started 3-0. and o. I think A lot of that early momentum and excitement is gone. Do you feel that? Well, yeah, I think that uh, we are a team that is better than what our record is. Um, uh, and there, some of the momentum is gone. We're four and four, but you know we've beaten the teams in our division, and within our division, you know we stand in pretty good shape. We interrupt this interview with Dan Marino for the following AFC East midseason update. Miami ran over New England to kick off the Jimmy Johnson era. This is not a rebuilding year. And later picked off Buffalo in Buffalo. New England was stuffed by Buffalo in their first meeting. Watch a draw, watch a draw. But earned a series split with a win at Foxborough last week. Somebody's going to have to shoot him about six more times. Indianapolis beat up on Miami in a Monday night slugfest. Collinsworth got to pick us then. But lost to New England and Buffalo, the latter an overtime thriller. Oh, yeah, let's not forget everyone who's played the New York Jets have won. What am I supposed to cry? I'm not going to cry because we lose. This has been an AFC East midseason update. We now return you to Greg Gumbel. Some games appearing <clears throat> to be bigger than others. I would say this game against New England qualifies, don't you think? It's, it's a huge game for us because it kind of is going to set the tone for, uh, you know, which way this, this team is going to go as far as uh, are we going to be a team that's going to contend for a playoff, or are we going to be a team that's just going to be hanging around until the end of the season? You know, that's it's the telling. These next two weeks, this week against New England and next week against Indianapolis, is going to be a you know, big sign of which way this team is going to go. The question of whether or not it was the same Dan Marino we're used to seeing that played against Dallas last week, you say no. No, I think he came back a week too early, just like you talked about in the interview. Uh, last week, 12 completions. That's the fewest that he has had since 1989. I just don't think he was right. And, Joe, this is a tough trip for the Miami Dolphins and Dan Marino today to go up to New England. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes for this reason. When you play in the division and you've already beaten a division opponent at your place, now you got to go travel and beat them on the road. I'm going to tell you, that's a tough assignment. Mike? It, it's a must game, and I think that, that's been well documented. But I think the main thing that has to happen, the reason they won the first week when they played them is they rushed the football. If they cannot rush the football, Miami has no chance. And I asked Dan about going up and playing in the chilly weather in New England. He says it doesn't bother him. A lot of things don't bother that guy. He's pretty good. <laughs> All right. A time out here, and then we're back with the Honda Pick of the Week right after this. Stupid bird. Never underestimate the bond between a civic coop and its owner. that said they'd be there when you needed them didn't stand up to their promises. That's life. Our policy of thoughtful, prudent investing has kept us, well, a pillar of strength for the last 150 years. That's New York Life, the company you keep. Somewhere between silver and white is a color called chrome. One of the colors between the colors created by Canon Laser Color. Canon Laser Color, its only competition is reality. Hey, you're a guy, and guys need protection made just for them, like Speed Stick. Our new pack is easier to handle and has a new comfort top. It's a better way to get that same great Speed Stick protection just for the guys. Today, more than ever, business isn't conducted in just one language, nor does it rely on a single currency or a universal set of rules. 
So what makes you think it operates at just one speed? That's why worldwide, UPS gives you more guaranteed on-time delivery choices than anyone else. After all, business today may know no boundaries, but when it comes to deadlines, it has plenty. UPS, moving at the speed of business. The Pick of the Week is brought to you by Honda. Vehicles designed to help simplify your life. Everyone except Mike Ditka won last week, so Will McDonough maintains his one-game lead. With this week's picks, here's Greg Gumbel. Well, this picks competition is beginning to heat up. Chris Collinsworth tried to chop block Mike Ditka during the commercial break. <laughs> Today, Ahmad likes the Oilers over the Seattle Seahawks. Ooh. Will, Joe, and Chris take New England over Miami. Mike and I will go with Kansas City over Minnesota. Ahmad, you have not changed your pick today. and I'm proud of you. We're all very proud. Okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't even talk. Listen, I'm, I'm doing very poorly and I'm embarrassed why, but I don't care. Here, why, why don't you just start copying off? Like, I'll call you on Friday, okay? I'll copy you know, you're not, you're not getting off the hook. There, is <laughs> there was a time when every week you would pick the Vikings without fail. Yeah, I know, and then that time has passed. <laughs> <laughs> There's three losses. That's right. Warren Moon's hurt. He's not playing. Well, yeah, that's true, because... Joe, I study there, was time, there was a time there Joe strayed away from the Redskins on a regular basis, too. <laughs> you get that. I'm right. back on those Redskins now. How about them Redskins? They're going down today. All right, we'll see you at halftime. The NFL on NBC continues after these words from your local station.